But other than that, man, it, like I said, it's hard. If I had if I had a full staff and I had cooks, you know, I'd be doing everything. I'd be doing catering. I'd be doing everything because there's money to be made. I get, you know, offers to do caterings and like there'll be people like, hey, tell me how much you want. I don't care. And, you know, we had this lady to the point where I had to go and get all the equipment to go do it because that's how bad she wanted us to be at her party. Yeah. Dope. Live with another episode of Adversity Kings. So today we have special guest. Just met you. So what's your name again? Jose Garcia. Jose I, Garcia. I go by Joe. Joe. Okay, I was yeah. going to say Joe. So, and then you are the owner of Chicago, Chicago Style, Style Taco Shop. Yeah. Cool. So, came across Chicago Style Taco Shop. The uh, I've had it before, but I went in person uh, last week. So I went in there twice and figured I'd just ask, you know, who's the owner, if they'd be interested in hopping the podcast. And said yes pretty much on the spot so dope how's your day going it's going pretty good good yeah that's good anything exciting today i just got back from little rock arkansas today <laughs> i left yesterday and came right back i'm so. from i'm from little rock yeah yeah i was born and raised there yeah i just drove over there to pick up a cousin of ours that's moving out here and drove right back got here at around like 12 yeah so it was a long trip wow that's so weird because I'm, I'm from there yeah. so what about you where were you born and raised I was born in California, but I was raised in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, awesome. So do you go back at all? Yeah, I go back occasionally. Um, that's where I originally had my first uh, Chicago-style taco shop was in Las Vegas. Okay. What inspired you to do the Chicago-style taco shop? A family member of ours uh, opened up Cilantro Taco Grill. Okay. And so when they opened up the first one on Mannheim Lake, I started working for them. And, you know, I was like, you know, I like the vibe. I like, I, was, I like how everything was flowing. And I was like, you know, I can do this. Yes. You know, I'd rather do this on my own and learn everything then be working for the man and yeah you know, i did i got the opportunity to open one up in las vegas and you know it's it's pretty pretty good so is the one here in lombard the only one you have right now then yes and then how long have you been doing that one that one i'm on two years two years yeah awesome so i'm on, I'm on two years at this place so i guess from from that what a what what essentially inspired you to get into well how long have you been doing pretty much uh running your own business Running my own business, a total of eight years now. Okay, dope. And so were you six years in Vegas? Yes. Okay, awesome. And then so what did you do before tacos? I was working for uh, a company called Mounted Memories. We did a lot of sports memorabilia, framing and all that. Okay. And that's how I came over here. Okay. The the company moved out here to uh, Northbrook. And so me and my family moved out here. My sister lives here. Okay. So that only lasted a year because they moved to Florida. And that's when they were like, hey, we're going to open up a, a taco shop. You know, do you want to help us out and all that? And that's where it all began, pretty much. Awesome. And then you just kind of took over ownership? No, that's still going. They have, it's called Cilantro Taco Grill. Okay. So they, they, they have their thing going, you know. And then you broke off and did your own? Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Now, what was growing up for you like? You know, normal, average family, you know, not poverty, but not rich. So yeah. it, it, it was a bit of a struggle to get where you needed to be. Oh. And, you know, financially, I guess is. Like back in the yes. day, it, it was the the biggest issue. You had to work hard to get yeah. very little out of it. But, Absolutely. You know, we had a good growing up. My mom, my my mom was like the the main one. She was always there for us. You know, yeah, helping us out whatever we needed. She never said no to us. So, yeah. is that who you're closest with? Yes, my mom, my sister, and my kids. Right now, they're okay. my number one in my family right now. Do you guys do? I I grew up with like a Italian friend, and they did the Sunday dinners. Do you do like a family day? designated you guys get together here not necessarily because my mom still lives in las vegas okay but like with my kids and stuff you know we try to hang out as, as much as we can yeah and they both work for me as much just you know getting to do what we needed to do my mom she wasn't really strict with us so yeah she would let us you know give us a little free hand but she's like as long as you guys are not getting in trouble yeah or you know hurting anybody yeah just grow up and get to see what this world is like yeah. you know on your own experience yeah that's awesome so other than that, like I said, man, my mom, she she's the one that yeah always has been there for all of us pretty much. And if it wasn't for her, I don't know where we'd be. Maybe awesome. with someone strict or something. Yeah. Now, what about your dad? What's he do? Or what did he do growing up? Uh, he was more like the strict guy, you know, like yeah. he didn't really give a lot. You know, he, yeah. you ask him for something and he'd be like, for what? You, you know, he yeah. was really tight with everything. So, yeah. you know, unfortunately, when I was like 15, him, him and my mom got divorced and okay. he moved back to Mexico. And okay. You know, we had a really rocky relationship growing up. But other than that, right now, you know, we have a great relationship. And, okay. you know, he, he likes our food. And he's yeah. like, I can't wait to come out to Chicago and get some of your food. And I'm yeah. like, well, 
Whenever you want, we're here. So who inspired the menu? Uh, my sister. With Your my sister? sisters, yeah, they had okay. uh, they had their thing, and I kind of learned everything because, you know, like I said, before I was working in a designing company, you know, doing logos and all that, so yeah. I had no cooking background or anything. Yeah. So I just learned everything, and one of their cooks was always like, just try everything. If you like it and you know it's good, everybody else is going to think the same thing. So yeah, I just kind of stuck to that, and I did that, and... You know, my menu is a little bit different from theirs now, uh, certain items, but, you know, everybody cooks their own way. So yeah. we have our own way of doing things. What do you think makes you guys unique, separates you guys? I think uh, our Windy City fries and like our tacos dorados, that sets us apart a little bit. Yeah. But other than that, I'm, you know, like I said, they have pretty good food too. So, so what's the taco zagaros or cilantro taco grill? Yeah, but what, what did you just... Oh, do? dorados. So those yeah. are like the... Everybody calls them quesabirrias because they're made with birria. It's goat meat. Okay. And they dip them in the broth, like in the yeah. beef broth. We have that, but we do them with barbacoa. Yeah. But with our menu, you can put any type of meat in it that you want. It's not just that. Okay. And th I think that sets us apart from everybody else that does it because everybody else that does it is either goat meat and that's it. Yes. And we can do chicken. We can do, you know, carnitas. We can do any type of meat off our menu. Awesome. And, and what's your favorite taco? I'm going to say the barbacoa. Yeah? Yeah. I'm getting. I'm actually getting ready to open one up in uh, in Melrose Park on 19th and Lake. Okay. It's going to be called Barbacoa King. Okay. And that should hopefully be ready in, I'm going to say, three months if everything goes well. Now, if people want to do any taco stuff right now, they just got to come to Chicago Style Taco Shop. Is there any social media or anything that you guys have where they can kind of find you guys? Yeah, we have uh, Facebook, Instagram. And right now, I think TikTok. And it, Facebook is like the main one. It's all Chicago style taco shop. Yeah, all Lombard. There. Okay, cool. In Lombard, do they people have to put that Chicago style taco shop yes, Lombard? Yes, yes, because uh, okay. because of the one in Vegas, that one still pops up every now and then. Okay, makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Awesome. What are you most proud of in this point in your life up until this point? I think my kids. I'm yeah. more proud of my kids. Yeah, they. You know, I taught them young. We started, like I said, six years ago. So. My oldest, he was like nine, and yeah. then the other one was eight. And they would always be like, why are we here? You know, you don't let us be normal kids. I'm like, what's normal kids? Yeah. Oh, they, you know, they wanted to be sitting down playing TV all day. I was like, I'm going to give you guys a reason to go home and sit down and relax. Yeah. So I would have them there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when yeah. they were in school. But when they were out of school, they were seven days a week. Yeah. And right now, you know, they're the ones that take care of me. Like, I went to Arkansas. They were there the whole time. Yeah. They, I didn't need to be there. Yeah. And it was, it was them and my wife. Yeah. That's awesome. Keeping it in the family. Yeah. So do you have any kind of outside of work? Do you have any like hobbies or, I mean, outside of work and, you know, I know you're with your family all the time. So do you guys have any hobbies or anything you, you kind of like to do? Uh, a little bit of cars. We're getting into uh, fixing up cars and, you yeah. know, modifying them up here and there and yeah. trying to find the next thing to modify. Yeah. You guys have, a, do you have a favorite car? I do. I have a 93 Honda Civic hatchback uh, SI. Yeah. And the only reason I have that car, because a lot of people, you know, they'd be like, oh, Honda's this and that. Uh, it was one of my cousins, and he passed away racing, and, you know, yeah, he kind of died doing that. And that car was sitting there, and he was trying to fix it, and it caught my attention. And I was like, hey, you know, I'll take it off your guys' hand for yeah. 300 bucks. And they gave it to me, and I've been dragging that car around for, like, 10 years. Wow. I've been, you know, I fixed it at one point, then saved a little money, took it to a shop. Got it half ass fixed, and right now I'm back in the process of that's dope. of fixing it. So it's gonna be pretty clean. Do you have a, a favorite car in general? Yeah, 1950 Chevy yeah. C10. Yeah, that sounds dope. What about your boys? Uh, my son, he's into like Challengers, and okay, he he wants to go fast. Yeah, okay, he likes the modern stuff. Do you guys do car shows? Yeah, we like uh, there was a little car show just I believe on Friday. Okay, so he went to that, and then you know I try to keep him in the loop where. Things are at so he can go and see, but you know, it's a little scary. He likes to go fast. Yeah. And he's only seventeen. So I tell him, Hey, you know, you pay your consequences. So yeah. you know, try to be responsible. But the more you tell him, you know, it's like you're telling him, Go faster, go faster. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be careful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So what's been the hardest adversity the podcast kind of started with, you know, overcoming adversity? What's been the hardest adversity you've had to overcome in your life? Mm, I don't think I don't think I've had it like that, you know what I mean? Just yeah. Growing up pretty simple, you know, trying to figure out what you're going to do in life and i think you know i'm there pretty much you know yeah just other than that is just keep going at it chopping it and see where it goes so maybe more so as others would probably perceive as adversity 
your perception has always been like, hey, look, I'm, I'm grateful for an opportunity or grateful yeah. to be alive, so I'll just keep Correct. keep swinging. Yeah. So. Yeah, because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, why this are you horrible. doing this? Yeah. yeah, you know, you're there all day. You know, are you are you do you feel like you're getting anywhere? And for me, I feel like it's better from previously working somewhere because, you know, you're always there and you have to be there and you can't take time off. And if you're sick, you know, you have to watch how many days you have. Yeah. And with this, you know, sometimes you're there all day because, you know, it's your business. You have to take care of it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you can set it up to where you'd be like, hey, you know, I'm not coming in tomorrow yeah. or I'm not going to come in in the morning or I'm just going to chill. Or even if you're there, you're just kind of watching everybody. You're like, hey, I'm not going to do anything. You know, I I pay these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, other than that, man, it's just live day at a time and see where it takes you pretty much. You know, obviously yeah. the goal is always to to make more money and, you know, yeah. be more successful in life. But you just got to go with what you have. You know, you can't impress everybody out, you know. Yeah, at absolutely. Until you get there. I was, because cause everybody I hire is 1099. So I, I run a life insurance company here. And okay. uh, I always tell them, you know, I would much rather slave for myself than slave for somebody else. And Correct. and even in comparison to, I would still rather work for myself, make a little less money than work for somebody else and make a little more money. Like I'd, I'd still yeah. rather be 100% commission and, and build my own schedule and be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it with who yeah. I want to do it with. And, and and build over the years and go through the the pain and the suffering of, of essentially building a business and being an entrepreneur and then go through the pain of the suffering of working on a salary or an hourly wage and somebody telling me what I'm worth and when to show up when I can't show up Correct. you know what I mean so that that's what I I really appreciate about entrepreneurship and and building your own business yeah like I said man you know I'm not the most successful person but you know yeah. I'm in the process of opening up a second location yeah and you know I'm expecting that one to do maybe a little better than yeah. where i'm at now yeah yeah but at the end of the day you know i'm happy with what i'm doing here because yeah. even if we were to compare this one to the one that i had in vegas you know this one this one got me places more faster than the one in vegas that's so so yeah for me it's been you know it, it's been a hard journey but i enjoy it yeah you know, so. I, I enjoy what i do there's days that you're tired but the next day you're like ah oh, you know i got this i'm gonna yeah. take care of this absolutely yeah. so what's kind of like your five ten year vision and plan you plan on staying and Illinois, do you want to have a bunch more shops? You just want to blow up the one you have now and then the one you're opening up in addition to one that I have now? Well, my goal, I think my goal would be to at least have five more shops here in, in Illinois. Yeah. And just maybe keep it at that because the hardest part is getting employees. Yeah. That, that's, that's one of the hardest things. And that's the whole reason I went to Little Rock to pick up this guy and he's my new cook. Yeah. So other than that, I think, you know, back in the day. It so was will really he rotate the, the grill with your son? Oh, yeah. Right now, I tell him, I'm like, when, do you, when are you ready to work? He's like, take me in right now, and we'll go. I was like, all right, let's go. And yeah. I threw him in there. And he already had a previous experience, so it, it wasn't nothing that he never knew. Yeah. But he just got to get back in you know, the game and figure it out. And but he's doing dope. pretty good. And you drove down, picked him up, brought him back. Yeah, we got here. You didn't get back until 12. And that's a that's a decent drive. I think I've – is it 10 hours from here? 10 hours. Yeah, it's a 10-hour drive. Hours. So you left yesterday? Yesterday, like at five in the morning. Yeah, so you've been you're on low sleep. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. That's what it takes. A lot of people don't realize when you're building a business or you're in the process of even rebuilding. You know, because there's s cycles in business. You'll have yeah. really good quarters and then you'll have a slower quarter, Correct. or you'll have a really good year and then you'll have a slower next year. And then you got to make adjustments and different things like that. And and people don't realize. People just feel like, you know, you take off and then you have a good year, or you take off and things you're just going to immediately start you know overflowing and pouring in it's like no you gotta you gotta cut it's like a baby you, it's a child in a sense yeah you know? and, and it's hard because we have to be able to please the public you know yes. the customers and sometimes the customers don't understand our point of view yes you know they want stuff for free they you know they're like why don't we get free this or why do you guys yeah. charge for that you know at the end of the day we don't get nothing for free yeah you know? and, and with inflation i can't even imagine it's like every exactly. all everything's going up in regard to expense and it's like then people get mad when when products start to increase as well at their shops, and they're like, "Why, why, why is this yeah. restaurant becoming more and more expensive?" Well, it's like inflation that makes everything more expensive, and, and it just keeps getting more and more expensive. You know, there's yeah. there's times that we're like, "Hey, you know, we're ordering and everything's going well," and then they're like, "Hey, you know, the, the meat's gonna go up, this yeah. is gonna go up," and so what do we do? You know, we can't keep changing our prices. I mean, eventually we have to if it keeps getting worse, yeah. but the consumer always sees it like we're trying to make more money when that's not the case. Yeah. Because, you know, at the end of the day, they're there to get a couple tacos and, you know, they want to pay as less as they can, but they want every single thing on our menu on it, but they don't see the back end of, 
a business. They don't see, you know, how much we pay in taxes, you know. Yeah. Process, the credit card processors and yeah. insurance and, you know, everything that you have to have to run a legit clean business. Yeah. So I think that's one of the hardest things that customers don't see that. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm not saying all customers, but, you know, th there's people out there that just think you're trying to take their money. And then, so do you have two sons? Yes. And so what a, do have any of them said they kind of want to like partner with you and like start running their own shops for you or so my you? my my youngest he's 17 with him we have already we we try to open up a ghost kitchen in um in humble park okay so we tried that but for us it didn't really work out because it's tacos and people you know they want to order something different i guess we tried it for like about six months but it wasn't yeah. doing what we wanted and so he came up with uh his brand it was called uh chicago fry boys yeah and he had pretty much the same stuff on our menu but he just added things to it like he had burritos with cheetos he had a pulled pork burrito he had you know these really good fries that's like you know like the yeah. lote and baso type okay. but he had it in fries so he kind of wants to continue that down the road yeah that's and, and at the end of the day you know they see what it does it might not be a lot but they see what you can earn off of it. Yeah. So that's his thing. Yeah. And so, and then what about, and he's the youngest? He's the youngest. What's the oldest want to do? The oldest, he, I think he's just confused. You know, he yeah. he wants to be a forensic scientist or he wants to do this. And then next thing, you don't know what he wants to do. So I just yeah. kind of um, do what you want to do, figure it out and make sure that's what you want to do because you have to work hard at it. Yes. You know, you have to do it and get it and run with it because if not, you're just going to waste your time and go to college for this and then be like oh i don't want to do that i want to do this instead and i'll just open up a shop yeah absolutely what about movies do you have any favorite movies uh no no favorite movies no tv favorite shows movies. anything like that tv shows I'm, I'm a little stuck right now on uh what is this called um umbrella academy yeah it's a good show I, i'm hooked on that right now yeah it's a good show i've been watching that every every night i get yeah i mean it's been out for a minute but my son's like hey you gotta watch umbrella academy yeah it's a solid show it's yeah, a solid show. i've been watching that for a minute it's and dope. then especially with these businesses i mean you don't have a lot of you time don't have to, yeah you know you don't have a lot of you, time you get home and you just you know do a little bit of work and yeah you want to go to bed and exactly get up the next day and figure out what's next yeah absolutely and w any books or podcasts things that have kind of helped mold you or mentor you have you had any mentors or anybody guide you no just like as far as books and all that you know i'm not a big person a book person you yeah know, i didn't finish high school i dropped out of ninth yeah. grade so yeah yeah i i think one of my biggest uh mentors or who kind of guides me is my sister yeah she kind of tries to keep me in the right path she's always checking up on me is she sure. older yeah she's older okay she's awesome. always like are you make sure you pay this and yeah. pay your taxes and i got a letter from your insurance and so i kind of got to show her that everything's under control and yeah. she should be like, okay, good. That's dope. That's so, yeah. really good. You have that. Now yeah. is she your only sibling? No, I have a uh, two, two more older brothers. I'm the youngest out of four. Oh, okay. Awesome. So it's my sister. And then I have an older, two older brothers. Are you close with them at all? Yeah. Pretty what, close. So what do they do? They're all electricians in Las Vegas. Okay. That's dope. Yeah, Are they in the union? Uh, no, one of them works for a company. They do a lot of like uh, peace work, I guess okay. it's called, and one of them works at the Air Force. Oh, okay. That's dope. Yeah, so you, they have pretty good jobs. I, 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 I was going to be an electrician, but it wasn't for me. Yeah. It wasn't for me. I was like, nah. Broke out. And then especially with that Vegas weather. Yeah. Uh, I, I did it for a minute, you know, but I was like, this ain't for me, guys. Yeah, no, uh, I, I don't want to be an electrician. And everybody be like, hey, you know, there's money to be made. There is, but, you know, if we go back to that. You, you want to make money, you got to get up at 5 in the morning. And work until eight at night, you know, to do as much electrical work that you can, so you can make all that piecework money. Yeah. And so for me, I was like, no, nah. I was like, you guys enjoy it. Yeah. You might uh, as well I'll just do just, it for yourself. I'll just do my thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, outside of your taco shop, do you have a favorite restaurant or a favorite place you like to go? Uh, it's called uh, Aloha Wagon. It's a Hawaiian restaurant. Yeah. My daughter likes a lot of like masubi and stuff like that. Yeah. So we found that one. That one's pretty good. Is that nearby? It's in Chicago. It's probably like, uh, I want to say like 25 minutes from here. Okay. Dope. It's, and it's, it's all Hawaiian style? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because in Vegas we had a, a spot too that it was Hawaiian. Yeah. And one day she's like, hey, you know, I missed this. And I was like, you know what? Let me look it up. And so the first one I found was Aloha Wagon. And I was like, well, let's go try it out. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's on point. It's That's on so point. It's good. Now, do you guys do like any like, like 
taco tours or anything like that? Like, are there any fests or festivals that you guys participate in to kind of get your brand out there? I don't know. If here, like food festivals. Here, I haven't got into that because of the situation with, you know, staff that I don't yes. have yes. the staffing to do it. But in Vegas, we, we try to do them all the time. You know, yeah. it's good money. It's good exposure. Yes. And and it's really, you know, it, it's a, it was a thing for us to do. But you guys here, have a lot of good reviews, though. Yeah, you know, like I said, our food sp- speaks for itself, yeah. and you know, we we've, we've been blessed, and in Vegas too. I mean, like I said, in Vegas, it took me a long time to to get financially stable. You know, it took what took me two years in Vegas to do financially. It took me two months to do here. Wow! But you know, the population is a lot more dense here. Like you know, you you Google how many people live in five miles. Yeah, it's almost like half a million, and you Google that where my shop was in Vegas, and it's like. 74,000 people. Yeah. So, it, you know, the population was different. But, oh, my God, yeah. You know. Absolutely. From being out here, you know, I, I, I try to look at what's my next thing. Should I get a food truck? Because I get a lot of people that come in and be like, hey, man, if you had a food truck or do you do this or you do that? Like, right now, the only thing that I do, I try to sponsor, you know, like um, I'm sponsoring uh, Glenbard High. So we're sponsoring their football team. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm slowly trying to get in, at least in that way. So our logo is, you know, here and there, you know, at the schools or whatever I can get into. Yeah. Yeah, but, that's fire. But other than that, man, it, like I said, it's hard. If I had if I had a full staff and I had cooks, you know, I'd be doing everything. I'd be doing catering. I'd be doing everything because there's money to be made. I get, you know, offers to do caterings and like there'll be people like, hey, tell me how much you want. I don't care. And, you know, we had this lady to the point where I had to go and get all the equipment to go do it because that's how bad she wanted us to be at her party yeah and i was like all right i'm gonna do it you know let's do it that's dope but it's, it's hard like you know it's you, you try to get everything you know crammed together for two things and when you don't have the staff it's you got to do it on your own and run it yeah so right now i'm in the process of trying to get a van and get equipment you know and and trying to get you know a couple caterings here and there even if i have to do it on my own because like i said a lot of people they want catering yeah yeah, that's really sweet. And it's good money. Like I said, it's good money. You know, people pay for it. Yeah. When people want something, they don't care what it costs. Yeah, no, not at all. So that's you know, one of my next missions is to get a little setup going. Going to the catering more. Yeah. Yeah, you guys you guys do really well. It says uh, you almost got five stars, 112 reviews. This one right here says, holy F, we were in the area last month and found this gym. We had a chance for date night while the kiddos were, I don't know where they were at. But you guys got some solid reviews, dude. I yeah. was asked my assistant, I was like, Dude, I'm starving and I'm out of meal prep. Where should I go? And I was like, I'm, I'll do tacos. I feel like it's like not that bad for you. And uh, she said Chicago style taco shop. So I ended up coming down there and I did the Al Pastor. I think I think it was the Al Pastor was my that one was like my favorite. Yeah. So it was good. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it's it's different. You know, it hits a little different. Yeah. Like I said, I tried my competition around here and everybody's like, oh, you're not scared. I'm like. There's nothing to be scared of. You know, I already tried it. You know, I think I have something a little different from everybody. And yeah. I went with it. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely has a, like, because I've tried to try a few tacos around here. And I'm more of a, I usually just like fish tacos. You know, to be more of like that Baja fish style type of taco. And no, these, these tacos were legit, dude. Yeah. Solid, solid good tacos. So I guess more so in, in regard to your experience with, with running the taco shop and, and your, I don't know, maybe even working with your family. What, what's what been, like, your overall favorite part of running the taco shop? For me, it's, you know, getting to meet the customers. Yeah. Like, like I, you, you build a good relationship with a lot of people. You know, they come in all the time, and, you know, you give them a little free here and there, and they just love you. And it, it gives you, like, I, I want to say it gives me a, a satisfaction that we're doing a good job. You know, yeah. even my kids, you know, I, I taught them because, you know, sometimes they'd be like, oh, you know. This customer came in and they were just talking trash and saying this. I'm like, just let them be. You know, next time they come in, be like, hey, sorry, apologize, whatever. Even if you know you're right, just, I mean, you know, just make them believe they're right. Yeah. But, you know, even them, they'd be like, hey, man, this guy, he came in and he loves it. And he said he's going to come back and he keeps coming back. And now, you know, they're close. And now, yeah. you know, they're like, I want to say not family, but, you know, they're building a relationship. They're building a relationship. And they're like, hey, you know, I can teach you boxing and this and that. And, you know, it's just a whole bunch of races and people and yeah. you know characters yeah so it, it it gets you going you know and i think it teaches them what this world is about and who's out there yeah absolutely 
Absolutely. And uh, I, th- I don't think people realize how important it is to really learn how to communicate with, with people, you yeah. know what I mean, and build them up and how to understand that, you know, you don't necessarily really, really ever do you want to respond to any type of hate or negativity with hate and negativity and Correct. finding a way to be calm and like, let me just let this person speak and then breathe, try to figure out a way to build them up, make them feel good about themselves and yeah. proceed with making a decision. And, and, and that's what you have to do because sometimes, you know, they'll be, they'll be going crazy. And, yeah. And you, as soon as you start giving them their way, you know, it they almost feel, justifies. They, they feel like they, they yeah. won and, you know, they keep coming back at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, what, like I believe it was in the middle of last year, we, we changed our prices because when we started, we started with low prices. Yeah. You know, we were able to, but, um, we we bumped them up a little bit, even lower than our competitors, and we had this you know this customer that came in you know twice a week, and as soon as he saw that he's like I'm never coming back, your prices are ridiculous and blah blah. I'm like, hey you know that's what I have to do. You know I gave him an explanation, and a week later he was there, yeah. And, and he still keeps coming back and he keeps coming back and I'm like, you know I'm gonna ask him one of these days you know what happened and so I took it upon myself because you know he looks like a like, you know, he, he's financially well, you know, he drives really nice cars and, yeah. you know, you're buying tacos, you know, what are you spending? 10 bucks, you know, 12 yeah. bucks. And so I asked him and he was like, you know what, honestly, he's like, I really like your food. And, you know, I apologize for what I said, but I think your food is outrageous and your salsas are good. He's like, I try to go in other spots and they're more expensive. And I'm like, you know, that's, that's what yeah. you gotta do. And so from there, you know, like I said, I have a good relationship, you know, he tries to you know, sell me stuff and be like, hey, you know, I do this type of insurance and I do this. And now he's trying to come in my circle. And yeah, I'm like, all right, you know, he's in insurance, too. Yeah, that's dope. So that's dope. That's you know, dope. like I said, it, it's just you just got to let the customer win at all times. It's, you know, that's when you work in fast food. That's what it is. The, the customer is always right. Yeah. And you have to obey by that, because if not, you get into an argument. Yeah. Yeah. I've always heard a great saying, like, do you want to be right or do you want to get paid? You know, yeah. you can you can be right and win the argument, but lose the opportunity to make a dollar. And then if you lose an opportunity to make a dollar, which I know money isn't everything, but money buys you time. So really, you lose the dollar, you lose a you lose a minute, you lose yeah. an hour, whatever it might be. And I'd I'd rather get as many dollars as possible where I have that freedom to do again what I want when I want, and yeah. with with who I want. So. And then my biggest thing is like a lot of people that know me, they're like, hey, why do you give tacos away, or why do you do this? Like, you know, if I see you coming in all the time, I'm like, hey, bro, I'm gonna hook you up with your food. Yeah. You know, it's on me. And you're going to look at it and you'll be like, oh, wow, hey, thanks, you know. Yeah. You know, it's a gratitude. And at the end of the day, you know, like I told a lot of other people, you know, it's not, I, I may be losing in the, you know, food, but sometimes, you know, you burn stuff, you know, you have to throw stuff away, yeah. you know, to give that good product. So sometimes you lose more yeah. in the back of the house than you lose in the front of the house. Yeah. And and whatever you're giving out, you know, you're not losing because that customer keeps coming back, keeps coming back. Yep. You know, so that that's how I... I showed my kids and, you know, whenever you want to go test them, be like, hey, man, your food's really good. They'll be like, hey, you want a free taco? You want to try something else? Yeah. You know, and they do that. And we do that. You know, like if my customers that I have would be able to speak out and say, you know, what me and my family there, you know, do, they'll be like, man, they always get free food. And, yeah. you know, they're doing always this care and people. doing that. Yeah. We try to take care of our customers. Yeah. Do you guys have any new tacos coming up, speculating on, considering doing? Um, not at this location because, you know, it's a small, uh, kitchen, Yeah. but at, at the other one, I have a, a good, uh, a good menu yeah. that I'm going to come up with. That's dope. It, it, Will I you think, do anything I think it's like going to be nice. Breakfast styled or dessert style? It, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be based on the barbacoa, but it's going to be, you know, all barbacoa. We're going to have yeah. everything like we have here, like chicken and now, all that. Now, is barbacoa just pulled pork? It's uh beef. It's, so it's cheek Shred- meat. Okay. It's cheek meat. It's cheek meat. And it's cooked for like five hours, so it's really tender and soft. Yeah, it's almost like a pulled pork, and because it's shredded, isn't it? It's shredded, yeah. Okay, and then what do they soak it in? Like a broth? A be a broth? We, we cook it, yeah. We cook it with like a adobo. It's a bunch of um, red peppers and you know little things you do, and you blend it up and you boil it with that for like five hours. Okay, and just you know it, it comes out to a good product. Yeah, and so and that one that we're opening up, I think I'm gonna have a a, a real different menu from what everybody out here has. Yeah. So I'm really excited for that one. What What's that taco shop down in uh, the city we try? Oh, Velvet Taco. Yeah, have you ever had Velvet Taco? I had Velvet Taco because uh, they opened up a cilantro right up 
I believe, on the corner from Velvet Taco. Yeah, they just opened that one. And then they opened up another cilantro not too far from there, too. I think I've had cilantro, and I've just recently had velvet, but I still like Chicago more. Vel- velvet taco? Um, They're more of like a crazy taco. Yeah, I, I think it's the way they garnish it. Because at the end of the day, it's just, you know, it's a bigger taco, and it's a little different, like, garnish-wise. Yeah. But then, like, their salsas is, you know, something you get at a sh- on a shelf at a store. Yeah. You know, it's not really... Something I think the homemade. only thing I liked at the Velvet Taco, like really liked in comparison to like I like taco wise, <laughs> wasn't even a taco. It was a red velvet cake. Yeah, yeah, they have yeah. a red velvet cake there. We talked, we told, we talked about it. it. Was like, dude, this is a this is a solid cake. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wasn't really that crazy impressed with with the tacos, um, but the cake was good. Now, how about your guys' desserts? You have the I'm I'm a dessert guy. I didn't try yours though. We so we normally have a uh, like flan. You know, yeah. cakes like the tres leches. Yes. But yes. we get those uh, from a bakery, so yes. we don't we don't make them ourselves. But you know, it, like even with those, it's a hit or miss. Like sometimes we'll have them, and they don't sell. Yeah. You know. And then sometimes. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna bring them in anymore because you know we just throw them away. Yeah. And then as soon as you don't have them the first day, everybody's like, oh, yeah. give me a flan, give me a flan. Yeah. So right now, I think I just want to eliminate them and just keep the churros because we have like strawberry, caramel, yeah, and vanilla in the plain and. You know, those, we make them on the spot. So, yeah. you know, that we sell all day, every day. But a lot of people are not a fan of getting, you know, cake at a taco shop. Yeah. You know, like the flan, sometimes, you know, it, it's more popular. But for us, for some reason, like, you know, sometimes they'll sell, sometimes they don't. And, yeah. you know, and it's pretty good. You know, I've had it. You know, that's why it's there. We had other, before when we first started, we had somebody else bringing the product in. And I wasn't too happy with it. You know, you, yeah. you got to make sure you got something good. And with these guys, you know, they, they were making a good product, but, you know, it just it doesn't sell. Yeah. Now, do you have a favorite dessert? Is it flan? Yeah. I, I would say for me, I'm a big cake guy. Yeah. So it would be the tres leches. Uh, they, they the, make and the tres leches one. is like a milky cake. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And is that is that inspired from Mexico? I believe so. I'm not 100% sure on the, yeah. the back. Do you know how to make the, it or is you, can – I know how to make it. Yeah. Uh, my wife, she's made it before, so it's... Who cooks the best tres leches that you know? I'm going to say this bread company. The bread company? Yeah. Better, like, does your sister make one? Like, No, my sister, she's not a big cooker. No? Oh, okay. No. Okay. She, she cooks, like, I, I would say probably, like, four things that I can say right away, and that's all she does, like, over and over and over. There was another good taco shop I'm thinking of off the top of my head, and I wonder if you know them. Because uh, I feel like they're a little bit similar to you. It's Los Burritos Tapitos. Tapi- Tapitos? Yeah. Are you familiar with them, too? I, I've never tried their food. They're, I, I believe they're down Roosevelt. The ER. Yep, down Roosevelt. I'd say they'd be, like, number two in the area for, for me so far based off what I've tried. You guys are number one, and they'd be, they'd be number two. Yeah, I, I get that a lot. I get that a lot, and I'm always like, I'm going to go try their tacos one of these days. Yeah, I, I, what I really like... I think for me, like what builds our credit, because I want like an authentic taco, and I kind of get that vibe when it's like a like a genuine family based operation, where I know it's not gonna. Be, I don't want like a cookie cutter franchise. Like, uh, uh, there's no, there's not gonna be a unique authenticity uh, to to not only the taste but the experience. Yeah. So like the taste, the experience, the the family ness culture inside your taco shop. I think it all adds to the flavor of the taco. I feel like depending on how you feel can really determine how good that food is. Yeah. And I think the environment can, can kind of really persuade how you feel for, yeah, for me. I, th- I think that's a big thing. So, and, and I know how you, you guys are welcoming. They're welcoming. It's like everybody's talking and talking in Spanish. So it's like, I definitely know these tacos are about to be yeah. off the chain. Yeah. And like I said, man, we try, you know, right now I'm in the process of remodeling the inside a little bit because that's, yeah. you know, when I started, that's what I had. And now yeah. I'm just like, trying to figure out what look I want to give it you yeah know, because I got this other one that I think it's going to look really really nice yeah but I want to make this one too I want to make some changes to this one like how, tables and color yeah a little how, bit of everything how has uh how did COVID impact you guys it, it, it was it was for us it was hard because that's when I got my lease I got my lease like literally a month before COVID hit mm. so I was already pushing to try to open as quick as I could yeah and so it, it kind of stopped us in our tracks. And then on top of that, I was like, you know what? When when they had the outdoor seating, I was like, that's my time to open. I have to. 
And so I opened anyway, but it was, it was difficult, man. It, it was the hardest thing ever. Yeah. And then they're like, hey, you know, they're going to give stimulus and they're going to do this and apply for that. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can. But unfortunately for us, we didn't qualify for we didn't qualify for any of that because we were a new business. Yeah. And they needed to see, you know, taxes for the last yeah. year and, you know, your quarter taxes. And so I was just like, whatever, you know, that that's money that I didn't have and I don't need it. Yeah. And I, I remember my sister, she was helping me out with one of them and she's like, oh, they're going to give you $100,000, you know, what are you going to do? And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do anything until I see that money in my account. And then it turned around and it was like $1,000. And I was like, well, if they put that in my account, uh, you know, we'll do whatever we got to do. But I never saw that either. So at the end of the day, I was like, you know, it didn't get me excited. Yeah. But there was no there was no purpose to it, you know, because it wasn't in my account. Once it's here in your account, you know, you're like, okay, now it's there. I'm going to, you know, get new tables, you know, do this, do that. But, you know, now that I have a little more to spend, you know, that that's my goal is to change the inside of the aesthetics a little bit more. Yeah. Make it a little more. What, what is it going to be the colors? I, I'm thinking I want to leave some red and a little more black maybe and gray. Yeah. But I, I want to get rid of those tables for sure. Yeah. You know, a lot of people sometimes, you know, you get a big guy or a big woman and they're like, oh, you need to get, you know, big people, you know, tables. Yeah. We, we can't squeeze in here. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's kind of. For me, I feel embarrassed for them because, you know, they're trying to squeeze in there. And I'm yeah. just like, you know, we have a chair. And so they'll grab it. But, you know, yeah. I, I I was a big guy once. I was like 370 at one point in my life. So yeah. I know well, that congrats, feeling. dude. So you look now, good. like I said, I'm just trying to figure out what yeah. tables I want in there and how I want it to look. And, and it's kind of hard because you're just like, how do I keep it, you know, yeah. with what it is now? Yeah, yeah. Because everybody's used to seeing the red and you know, the colors. And I'm like, you know, I want to change it up a little more make it look a little nicer. Yeah. What'd you do to, what'd you do to slim down, bro? You look, you look way better. I did the, the, um, bypass surgery. Okay. I, I was like too lazy to work out, you know, yeah. when, when, when you're really big, you know, everybody's like, Oh, just do it. And I know a lot of people, I've seen videos, a lot of people doing it. Yeah. And so that was my easy way out. Okay. So what does that, what's that consist of? Uh, I guess when they cut you a piece of your stomach off and they make it like into a banana shape where you yeah. can eat like only a certain amount of food at a time. Okay. So when I first got it, it was like I was eating, you know, four ounces, four ounces for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but you feel better? I feel a lot better. That's so. I, I you know, it's, it's different. When, when I was a big guy, I didn't have any complications. You know, I was, I was the healthiest, you know, 370 pound guy. Yeah. Just, you know, like I tell everybody, you know, just, you know, your physical activity is not there. But other than that, you know, I could go anywhere do whatever you know i wasn't like dying or had yeah. diabetes or anything like that yeah and so you know you you can look a little different now you dress different you know yeah before it was like you got one aisle to choose from and that's all you have and now you know i can go to forever 21 or you know hollister and before you know the mall wasn't my option at all the mall yeah. was only for hats and shoes and that was it yeah yeah i never thought of that yeah. I just don't so Anything else you want to shout out? Anything else on your mind? Anything presently going on that's affecting the business? Good, bad, ugly? Anything at all? No, I mean, like I said, the business is where where it needs to be right now. I mean, yeah, I, I could. I wish it was more, but you know, a shout out to my kids. You know, more than anything, I love them to death. You know, yeah. if it wasn't for them, you know, I don't know where I'd be. Honestly, awesome. They they're my they're my number one. I try to you know take care of them, but yeah, I think if are I was they bilingual? Do they do they? Yeah, speak? they're bilingual. Okay, awesome. Yeah. My my son's birthday was yesterday. Let's go. And he's like, what are we doing? I was like, I know what I'm doing. I was like, I'm driving to Arkansas. I was like, so today we actually close at 8 o'clock on Sundays. I was like, just try to close at 6 o'clock, you know, so I can take you to dinner and, you know, we can have a good time. You know, they've been working so hard, you know, over yeah. these past few days. And then an employee was out. Yeah. I'm like my main chef. So I was like, you guys need to take care of everything while I'm out. Yeah. What's he want for dinner? Uh, He wants to go to Mean Chef. Okay. It's uh in um, Elmhurst. Okay. So that's what he wants. What do they do? I think it's like Chinese food. Okay. Yeah. Dope. Let's so, go. like I said, man, my kids is my biggest pride and joy. Let's go. And if I can give a shout out to anybody, it would be them and my sister, my my mom, and you know, just to all the many kids I want to have in the future. But yeah, for now, I think they're they're my number one motivation to keep going and showing them what we can do. Love it. Well, guys, this is uh, Jose or Joe with Joe. Chicago Style Taco Shop. They're right here in Lombard. The exact address again is? It's uh, 1238. 1238. South Highland Avenue. South Highland Avenue. 
come get your tacos. Yeah, and if they come in and they say that they saw the, this podcast, man, I'm going to hook them up. Yeah, so I'm if you saw the Adversity Kings podcast, so I'm going to go in in the mask and say I saw, <laughs> saw the podcast. So it's Aiden. We're going to get us some tacos. So, yeah. hey, this was dope, Joe. Thank you for coming well, thank on. Thank you for having and, us on uh, here. Love to have you on in a couple of years and see how you're doing. All right, man. Sounds good. Let's go. Peace. Right, Got a gift for you as well.